Okay, so let's look at uh, problem 55. Oops. And we have a function f of x equals cosine x plus one half cosine two x. And we're only interested in that function from zero to two pi. One trip around the unit circle. Hello. That didn't work. Okay. So they suggest in A, suppose we're really interested in the concavity of this function. Well, that's a pretty significant thing to be interested in. And they say, well, why don't we just graph it on the calculator? Okay, or on the computer. Let's do that. Let me change my window to 0 to 2 pi-ish. Okay. So let's see. It looks like it's concave down from 0 to, um, uh, well, something. Unclear. And then concave up for a while, and then concave down in the middle. I bet that's right at pi. That'd be my guess. But that's not an inflection point. It's still concave down to uh, something. And then concave up, and then concave down. That's actually a lot of changes. There's one, two, three, four inflection points here. And the thing is, it's pretty hard to estimate those. If you want to just eyeball them, it's actually pretty hard to tell exactly where in this region is its steepest, and where here is its steepest. And you might say, oh, well, just press a button on the calculator. Well, there isn't such a button on the calculator. If you're looking for a max, like here, or a min, like here, there, is, there are the maximum and minimum functions on the calculator. We know how to use those. And they do, they only still are approximate. They're not exact functions. They don't, think, they don't understand calculus, really. But um, they get a very good approximation to the max or min. But if you're finding inflection points, it's, that's, that's really um, fairly challenging to get an exact answer. So, what do we want to do? Well, we want to use calculus, but also go ahead and use the calculator. So let's take the derivatives, and then we would usually do an algebraic solution of f double prime changing sign. Looks like it's going to be just where f double prime is zero, no DNEs here. But we'll go ahead and use the calculator for that part of it. So it's a pretty good mix of using calculus and the calculator. So f prime of x is going to be minus sine x minus well, one half sine two x, but times two, because the one half and the chain rule two are going to cancel each other. And f double prime of x then is going to be minus cosine x minus two cosine x cosine two x. There we go. Okay. So we'd like to solve that equal to zero. Now that's not impossible to solve exactly. That's the kind of trig equation that we do know how to solve exactly. And I can't resist actually mentioning it, even though it's not what's asked for specifically here. What you do is you rewrite that with a trig identity. Cosine 2x is the quantity cosine squared 2 cosine squared x minus 1. And then that's going to be something that's just a quadratic in cosine x. It's minus 4 cosine squared x come on, minus cosine x plus 2 equals 0. And to clarify how you solve that, if you set u equals cosine x, that's minus 4u squared minus u plus 2 equals 0. That's a quadratic. We can, um, we know how to solve that. I'll let the computer do it exactly real quick here. Ooh, that's kind of icky. And that's just cosine x. That's not x itself. So x is going to be like stuff having to do with the inverse cosines of this stuff. So you can see it's theoretically possible to do it exactly, but it's pretty messy. At some point, you're probably going to break out the calculator just to get the decimal version. So it's not unreasonable to say, OK, we've done a certain amount of calculus. This is a more direct way to get at it. But now let's go ahead and use the calculator. So they're suggesting graph this guy. Let me copy that down a little lower. There's the second derivative. Let's graph that thing. Change the window again. OK, so there's the second derivative graph. And we can compare that to the first derivative graph. In fact, let's actually, you know what, what I'm going to do? 
is I'm going to put this, I'm going to add an item here. Ah, hey, that's smart. I can put them on the same graph. There we go. Okay, so here's that original function. It's rescaled a little bit to so doing an auto scale. And here's the second derivative. And so now, where this was steepest, where the inflection point is, that's corresponding to a, a zero of the second derivative right here. Here's where this, the original function was steepest, an inflection point, that's a zero of the second derivative. Another zero, another zero. And so all we have to do now on the calculator is find the zeros of this function, and that we know how to do. We can use the zero finding routine on the calculator to find that. Um, or in so, th since this is a different graphing program, I won't display you know how to do that on this program. You don't have it, but we know how to take the zeros of this of this new second derivative function. So once we plug this in as like your y two, for example, on a ti then you can find the zeros of that numerically and you'll get these four points that are the much more exact values of the rough estimates you would have gotten by looking at the original graph.